The next speaker is Professor Hiroshi Kori from the University of Tokyo, Department of Complexity Science and Engineering. The title of the talk is Novel Phenomena and Analysis Methods in Oscillator Networks, Higher Order Interactions, Higher Order Averaging, and Inference. Professor Kori. Thank you very much. So my name is Hiroshi Kori from the University of Tokyo. Thanks a lot for the organizing uh, this wonderful conference. I, this is actually my first time to India. I'm really enjoying this very exotic <laughs> uh, atmosphere and food, spicy food. And yeah, today my talk is about uh, the coupled oscillator networks. And uh, actually, I want to have one advertisement. As you know, there will be a Starfield conference next week in Tokyo. I'm not involved in the organization of this uh, conference, but actually my wife, my, this logo, my wife is the creator, the designer, and this logo was created my wife. So <laughs> this is the advertisement of my wife's uh, work. Okay. So uh, let me start with uh, self-introduction. So the, I got a PhD under the uh, supervised supervision of Yoshi Kuramoto, and then I moved to Fritz Haber Institute in Berlin and in the group of Alexander Mikhailov, and then Hokkaido University in the group of Yasumasa Nishiura, and then now I'm in Tokyo. And some people ask me where is my group, whether it is in Hongo or in Komaba. Uh, neither is uh, True. So the, our campus is in Kashiwa campus. This is the third campus in the, of the University of Tokyo. And this is uh, uh, the photo, the best photo maybe, of our uh, campus. And our graduate school is called, called Graduate School of Frontier uh, Sciences. And uh, there are many foreign students and foreign guests and, uh, in this uh, campus. And uh, if you like this campus, please visit us anytime you like. OK. So I have been working on synchronization for long. And uh, so as far as I believe, uh, as, far as, as far as I know, this is uh, one of the best examples of synchronization. This is the synchronization of metronomes on a suspension bridge. And uh, I start kind of random initial conditions. And uh, you can see very interesting transient dynamics. You can see now they make two clusters. One is small amplitude, one is large amplitude. They are uh, more or less in phase. But this is actually unstable. Maybe this is a subtle solution. This is unstable, and now one of them is hyperactive, and three are in phase. And now they finally find a stable state. This is in phase, and the amplitude is more or less the same also. So this is uh, the time courses to the synchronization by metronomes. And also, this is another example. This is a fragile synchronization through hydrodynamic interaction. So each cell has one flagellum in this case, and uh, if they are far, they beat uh, independently, but if they are close enough because of strong hydrodynamic interaction, they get synchronized. And this kind of synchronization would be uh, necessary for the efficient swimming of the microorganisms or the making the flow in the body. And also, second and clock is also one of the very important examples of synchronization. So our second and clock is a complex oscillator network. So there is a pacemaker tissue in the brain, and it is called suprachiasmatic nucleus. And it's a, it's a collection of, uh, of uh, clock neurons, clock cells. And each neuron has a 24 hours rhythm of genetic oscillations. And this is a movie showing the synchronization of this clock gene activity. You can see beautiful synchronization with, with uh, roughly about 24 hours rhythms. And actually, I'm really interested in the jet lag uh, stuff. And uh, uh, with collaborators, we have been working on the jet lag in mice. And 
actually what we one of the important things which we have found is the desynchrony occurs among SGM cells when light dark cycle is advanced by plus eight hours. So this corresponds to kind of the Eastman trip. For example, if you go from the Europe to Japan, you will experience, you will experience, experience about plus eight hour jet lag. And in this case, you may have a strong jet lag symptom. And actually, in the case of mice, what we can observe is this one. This is a genetic uh, gene expression inside SGN, and this is time, and this is before jet lag, and this is after jet lag. And please look at only black curves here. And before jet lag, we have wonderful 24 hour strong rhythm. But after the jet lag, you can see the strong dumping occurs for roughly one week. And this is due to the desynchrony among the oscillator, the, the clock, clock cells. So as in the case of the, uh, maybe you can think of the metronomes. So metronomes are in phase uh, in the normal condition, but after jet lag, they are totally desynchronized. And then uh, recovery occurs after one week. And we believe that this is the primary reason for jet, heavy jet lag symptom. Actually, I did a good experiment using a nice plant here, the six months old baby, <laughs> four years ago. And this data is unpublished. This is a data similar to what Raja Loy showed us. Uh, this is an actogram, and the, it's a, it, uh, anyway, so this is the actogram and slightly older than the ca case of the uh, Rajuli. And uh, this uh, blue, blue uh, bird shows the time of du duration of sleep of this baby. And this is day, this is day, and this is 24 hours local time in Japan. And this is uh, before we go to Germany, we went to Germany, and this is, uh, we stay in Germany for two weeks. And you can see this sleep, sleep uh, awake rhythm is quickly shift when we moved from Japan to Germany. So this is, I would say, mi minus eight hours jet lag. So this does not affect strongly in general to, the, the, to your circadian clock. But if you go back from Germany to Japan, this is plus eight hours jet lag, and this may this uh, strongly disrupt uh, the circadian rhythm in the case of mice. And the, the, in this case, for this baby, what happens is you can see this uh, sleep duration split into three bands. So we interpret that this is due to the desynchrony of the circadian clock in the brain, and. Uh, because the rhythmicity in the brain disappears and then uh, so-called ultradian rhythm only becomes evident. And that's the reason why we have this kind of, he has this kind of very <laughs> unorganized uh, sleep-awake cycle. And uh, as you can see, there is a big wide region here, so this is a disaster lasting for two weeks for us. <laughs> This baby wake up during the midnight for four, five hours for two weeks. Okay, so how to avoid jet lag? So this is the experiment in mice. And uh, so the, if you shift eight hours suddenly, as you said, the, uh, the jet lag, uh, you may have some jet lag. But this is our proposed method. You can split into two uh, days. To, uh, for the experience of the jet lag, four hours and four hours. And then the realization, the recovery becomes significantly accelerated. So this is easily uh, demonstrated by you also. If you, for example, for Europeans, if you go to Japan, please wake up four hours earlier on the day of the departure. Then this uh, actually correspond to this first jet lag, four hours, and then go to Japan, and then uh, the second day you will experience uh, additional four hours shift. And then this makes uh, actually the desynchrony, uh, uh, this uh, would prevent the desynchrony, and then uh, the jet lag, uh, the recovery from jet lag would be significantly accelerated. Okay. 
And actually, uh, yeah, this was uh, already reported from this paper. And actually, we did also this one uh, when we go to California from Japan. We stop over at Hawaii and then in California. And you can see now this baby doesn't have that such a, uh, such a strong, strange splitting of the sleep uh, rhythmicity. So two step chest that works. Actually, this also corresponds to for Europeans to come to India and Japan and Europe. So this <laughs> maybe you can change your plan to so, so so if you go from India to Japan, you may your jet lag would be reduced uh, compared to directly going to Europe to Japan. So for Europeans, you, this will be a good motivation for you to attend the uh, Starfields conference in Tokyo. Okay, uh, sync and desynchrony. Sync is quite often required for many systems to function normally and probably efficiently. And for, the case, uh, for example, the circadian clock, heartbeats, and beating flagella or cilia. And sync is also sometimes harmful. For example, Parkinson's disease and pedestrians walk on the suspension bridge and etc. And transient desynchrony may occur also because of a strong perturbation and quick recovery may be required. This was an example by this jet lag. So the, my message is understanding not only synchrony but also the desynchrony process is crucial. Okay, how to tackle the synchronization problems in uh, the theoretical manner? So this is a typical theoretical approach. So we have real systems. We can consider a set of ODEs describing uh, the dynamics of the system. For example, if you think of the metronomes, there is a Newton, Newtonian dynamical equations, and then we can uh, make this model quite easily, systematically. And by uh, analyzing or uh, theoretically or numerically, you can explain the phenomena, reproduce phenomena. And another way is from ODE, one can derive the phase, uh, phase equations, and by performing averaging, we can get chromotype phase oscillators as well. So this is also another typical way. And one can also directly infer the phase uh, equations from the real system, ex from the real data. Okay, so merit of phase models. So the phase model is a simply correct description. So when coupling is sufficiently weak, phase models may describe the dynamics of real system even quantitatively. And uh, another merit, this is actually a big merit, is a small number of parameters and often directly inferred from data. And uh, this, uh, because of this, we uh, some time ago invented uh, the methodology uh, to control the synchronization, which we call synchronization engineering, together with Esteban Kish. And using this phase model and solving the, the, the reverse problem from phenomena to real system, we can predict what kind of feedback interaction may realize a certain target synchronization behavior. So this was uh, done with uh, Ishtman Kish and uh, demonstrate the chemi uh, exp chemical uh, reaction demonstrated by chemical reaction experiments. Okay, in this talk, I will present our recent uh, studies using phase models. First one is inference of coupling strengths and network structure from data. And this was done together with my student Matsuki and my collaborator Kobayashi. And second one is complex dynamics in the network of three oscillators. This was done by uh, my student Kato and higher order networks of noisy oscillators, another student, Marui. Okay, so issue one, inference. So suppose that we may observe oscillatory signals Xi of T from a network of noisy oscillators and want to infer coupling strengths between oscillators. Suppose that we have these kind of uh, time series and we can only measure this uh, 
in this case, membrane potential, for example, X1 and X2. And we want to infer the coupling between uh, them. So we want to know the magnitude of K1 and K2. And uh, there are many studies uh, working on this. And one, one idea is to use phase models. So inference using phase models. So one idea is to fit the time series data to phase models such as this one. And by which coupling strength Ki and also the noise strength D. Di may be inferred. Then for this, we need two steps for it. So the what first step is reconstruction of phase phi i from oscillatory data xi, and the second one is fitting phi i to the phase model. And many studies were conducted along this line. However, only a few carefully considered the process one. Most studies uh, devoted to the, uh, the process two, and but. Uh, they do not really uh, carefully consider the reconstruction of phase. And how to reconstruct phase from the time series data? So one, uh, one well-known method is Hilbert transform. So suppose that you have this xt, so this is observable. You can construct hd by Hilbert transform. This is kind of half by delayed uh, signal of the original data. And then you have trajectory on the x, h space, and then you can uh, define the phase of oscillations. This is a very typical way to reconstruct phase from the real data. Another method can be delay coordinate or maybe state space models. OK, so let us see whether the inference view phase reconstruction using the Hilbert transform works or not. So we consider a network of oscillators, and, uh, it, which is described by this one, standard uh, crumb type phase oscillators plus noise. And suppose that we may observe only xi. xi is a function of phi, cosine phi. Actually, this is uh, our assumption. So we cannot observe directly the phase, but we can observe only this oscillatory signal xi. Okay? and reconstruct the phase using the Hilbert transform from this xit. And then by fitting the reconstructed phase to the phase model using a maximum likelihood method, uh, we can infer connection with wij and also noise d. And this is an example network. Uh, we consider this kind of given uh, example network. So we have 10 oscillators, and these white oscillators have very similar frequencies. So with this coupling strength, they well synchronize. And these gray, gray oscillators have very dissimilar frequencies, so they are desynchronized with this coupling. And so this is our network, and this is the result. And you can see, especially among the synchronized oscillators, the connections or inferred much weaker than the actual one. So the inference is failed. So why does the inference fail if we use a standard Hilbert transform? So now suppose that we observe xt, this is a cosine phi, and where phi is omega t plus u, and this is the modulation, the weak modulation to the phase. And suppose that U obeys this uh, process, so-called orenstein urenbeck process. And in this case, xt looks like this. xt is a, uh, a cosine phi. It looks like this, and a kind of uh, slightly noisy oscillations. And from this data, we reconstruct the phase and then calculate U. And this black curve shows actual U, and this red one is a reconstructed U using the Hilbert transform. And you can see U does, cannot follow uh, uh, the uh, original data, especially when the original data shows a quick uh, variation. So this Hilbert transformation have a kind of the uh, low pass filter effect. And this becomes evident if we look at the uh, power spectrum. So this is the original power spectrum. The black one is original power spectrum. And this red one is a power spectrum 
after using the Hilbert transformation, you can see that uh, there is a, a kind of a characteristic frequency omega. This is actually this is this omega, so the frequency of these oscillations. And above that, the power is almost half, half becomes almost half. So the, there is a clear low pass filter effect. Okay. And uh, to circumvent this, we propose a modified Hilbert transform. And so this is the result. This blue curve is our modified Hilbert transform. And you can see this uh, almost precisely uh, reconstructs the original data and also the power spectrum. And we know that this works when this UT, the modulation of the phase, is weak enough. This is strong, then the, our method doesn't work. But uh, anyway, for weak uh, modulations, this, uh, our method works finely. OK, so inference using our proposed uh, transformation. So given network, Hilbert transform uh, failed. But our proposed uh, reconstruction, we can uh, infer the uh, the coupling strength uh, correctly. OK, so that's it for the Matsuki work. And also, we have another method inferring uh, for the information of uh, coupling strengths between oscillators using only spike data. Uh, because of the limitation of time, I, uh, I just show uh, the result. So <laughs> my message is our, this method also works finely. And uh, we can make a kind of precise uh, uh, infer uh, pre uh, the, the coupling strength is uh, precisely inferred using uh, not so long uh, oscillation data. OK, so next issue is the uh, uh, three oscillator model. Uh, we consider this uh, type of chain of three oscillators, A, B, C. And application is whatever. For example, some uh, researchers think of this kind of oscillator network is important for the understanding of the magnetic field of the sun. And this is reported recently by this uh, uh, group. And they believe that the solar cycle oscillation, the, the certain components of magnetic field of the sun are synchronized in an antiphase manner. And uh, they try to infer the essential parameters using this type of Kuramoto uh, phase oscillators. OK. Anyway, so uh, let us uh, focus on this uh, three oscillator model. And uh, this three oscillator model shows some kind of complex behavior or already very interesting. So the, suppose that three oscillators have these natural frequencies, three. 1 and 0 0.5. So this is uh, coupling strength, and this is effective frequency. If the coupling strength is 0, this is coincides with the natural frequency. So this is omega a, omega b, and omega c. And, as, uh, and we set this a to 2. So the coupling between a and b is stronger than the coupling between b and c. OK, when the coupling is weak enough, then and they do not synchronize. And as coupling, the overall coupling strength k increases. Uh, at first, b and c synchronize because the natural frequency of them are closer than the, that between a and b. But the coupling strength is further uh, increased. Then something different happens here. Now the, the, the synchrony between b and c breaks down here. And then this guy. Uh, try to synchronize with A. And this is due to the strong coupling between A and B. So the full stronger overall coupling because of this architecture. So the A and B tend to synchronize rather than B and C. OK, so this kind of uh, phenomena may occur, so we, which we refer to as a, uh, the, the committee switching, so the B switches his uh, community from C to A. OK. And uh, this transition occurs due to the discrepancy between the dynamical and the structural properties. Dynamically, B and C are closer, but the structure and B are more tight, the tighter, the closer. So that's why this kind of complex behavior occurs. 
and how to analyze. Actually, obtaining this K4, this is full synchrony, is quite easy. So the, in, the, in the case of chromat phase oscillators, the full synchrony corresponds to the fixed point of the state, so the, uh, uh, one can easily uh, study, the st study the stability of the full synchrony. But the other transitions are not easy at all because each correspond to the, that between the quartz periodic solutions of the systems. So let us take a perturbative approach. Okay, for obtaining K1, first of all the averaging works. So this is our original dynamical equations and we consider these phase differences x and y and in terms of x and y we have these uh, two dimensional dynamical equations. And by changing the parameters and variables, we have this uh, non-dimensional version of this system. And here, epsilon is actually the, the frequency difference between B and C compared to uh, that between A and B. So we suppose that this, this is small. And we also assume that coupling is weak enough. And then you can see, and uh, now y is a slow variable. Epsilon is small, k is small, so y is small variable compared to the dynamics of x. x is uh, of order one, so the fast variable. So one can uh, then easily uh, conjecture that you, one can eliminate this sign x term because this, is, this describes the fast oscillations compared to the dynamics of y. So one can neglect this one. So, to get this uh, closed dynamical equation for y. And by solving this, uh, we can analyze the synchronization between b and c, and we obtain the criteria couplings to epsilon over two. Okay, so this uh, naive average approximation works for obtaining the first uh, transition point k1. But for k2, this doesn't work, so the, we need actually higher order averaging to obtain the second order, second transition at which B and C desynchronize, higher order averaging is required. So again, we have this dynamical equation and we want to eliminate this sign x time first, uh, first oscillation uh, component in a more precise way. And to do this, we consider near identity transformation. X and Y will be transformed into P and Q, another variable, which are very similar to X and Y. And, and using this transformation, and after a large, uh, uh, a bit uh, long calculations, we get this uh, dynamical equation for P and Q. And you can see this is actually the, the, the naive, this, this is the same as the naive uh, averaging, averaging approximation, and we get now this second order correction term. And here, the effect of coupling between A and B is described, and by which we can uh, now predict the second, second by far, uh, the transition point. Okay, and this is a phase di diagram using our cell and the direct numerical simulation of three oscillator models. So for suppose that we have uh, we fix the coupling ratio A here, and then we coupling, we have desynchrony, and now here B and C synchronize, and again desynchrony, and then uh, A and B synchronize, and ABC synchronize. Okay, so this is a, a result of our averaging, and the first transition and second transition can be uh, well reproduced this phase diagram. And actually, we can also get this, uh, this third transition point by using another, another technique, geometric uh, technique, and uh, we can also get uh, uh, not bad uh, curve here. Okay. Five? Three. <laughs> okay. Three minutes. So the final issue is higher order networks, noise oscillators. Okay, so there are two types of Kramoto model. One is uh, quenched noise, and the other is dynamical noise. So omega can be identical, but we have dynamical uh, noise. And in either case, we have this uh, second uh, order transitions. 
the continuous transitions in terms of the order parameter R. This is Kramot order parameter. So the, so the okay. And one can consider many types of extension, and one ex possible extension is two simplex interaction. One can also say three body interaction. And the extension of, of model one were well studied already. Uh, Tanaka Oyagi do it, so Scarlett Arnas do it. And there is also a large body of studies. For example, yesterday there was a nice talk by Yalang. Yalang and, uh, and also he explained uh, carefully about the uh, backgrounds well, so I can skip all of these backgrounds. However, behavior of model two noisy oscillator in higher order networks are not well studied. And we consider globally coupled uh, phase oscillators with two and three body interaction and independent white noise here. And using all the parameter, we have this reduced model. So the, this, these two equations are actually equivalent. And okay. And what is the effect of three-body interaction? So the, by these three-body interactions, individual phase theta seems to be locked either capital theta or theta plus pi because of the factor two here. Therefore, one can suspect that three-body interaction promotes the formation of two cluster states. And so motivated by this observation, we consider two cluster states as the initial condition and observe the dynamics. And this is the result. Ah, oh, sorry. This is the result. So the, if the noise is absent, then the starting from initial condition, two cluster states maintain, but with the uh, noise, this slowly, slowly decays and suddenly uh, DC fully desynchronized, and this is the evolution of the phase <laughs> distribution. Okay, so we name this one as an erosion of synchronization by noise, and which occurs actually when the noise is infinitely, infinitesimally weak. And this erosion was just embedded by me, so the, if, if this naming is not good, please advise me. I will think of this one uh, again. Okay, so, but if uh, there is a uh, two-body interaction as well, then the, this erosion can be stopped. And uh, to, uh, the, the two, uh, the, the two cluster state becomes persistent. And theory is something like this. So we consider the identical phase oscillators, and then we can consider the focal plank equations and the stationary distribution and self-consistency, and by this we can do the stability and no, 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 bifurcation analysis and make a phase diagram like this. And what we can find is the, as uh, the, uh, there is a bistable region here, and this, is, this point, the transition becomes supercritical and <laughs> subcritical, I will quickly down. And uh, we also <laughs> derive the closed dynamical equation for R using Kramer's rate theory, and this is something like this by which we can uh, predict the lifetime of the uh, synchronized state. I'm sorry about the, the, <laughs> the delay of my talk. Okay, so summary, novel phenomena and novel techniques. Okay, thank you very much.